ni politico oh, yeah, yeah. Where they do evil, no one may pass in talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they tip money in buck. One man picking, they the street, they hawk. Still, them talk, say, make we no talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make you shut up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Day off in my oh, yeah, yeah. my oh, yeah, yeah. Aha. Now oh. All these bad bad politicians. Hello there. Apology for the latest start. Good evening to you, good afternoon to you, and good morning to you from wherever you are watching from. <clears throat> this is Mayegun live. Thank you so much. As you are joining, please remember, share the broadcast, okay? Invite your friends, invite your not-so-friendly friends, and tell them, my good today, there is actually a load of stuff to share tonight. Please share the broadcast. Suddenly, a mafioli that DSS said they arrested him for money laundering, for sponsoring terrorism, for sponsoring unknown gunmen, for corruption, self enrichment, forex around tripping and sabotaging the economy, suddenly, they say they are only charging him as unknown gunman. Amy Fioli. Also, ladies and gentlemen, brethren, we have a copy of uh, Tiff Numbu's lawyer's written address. Written address is like the closing of their defense, of their case. Eh? And the content of that written address, we have them here tonight. Thank you. you are an illegitimate president. Whatever you do right now, you are just doing them at the as, I mean at your own prerogative. The court will decide who is the real president of Nigeria. Labour Party, Losobe. <laughs> What today? So good evening to you once again. Good morning to you and good afternoon to you from wherever you are watching this broadcast from. It is Mayegun live. For those who are watching live, by the way, if you are watching a replay, ignore those uh, fairity from the beginning. You can skip all that. Now, if you have read the caption of this broadcast, which is the rider, and you have also managed to read the body of this uh, broadcast, which is what uh, describes what we are going to likely talk about, something in detail. 
and you have also liked the broadcast, shared it. I want to say thank you to you personally. So thank you. Now let's take it from the start. Okay. Uh, you have, I mean, you saw as part of what they called Tifnumbu's first good actions, the suspension of Eme Fioli and his subsequent arrests. And before his arrest, there were dramas. This drama started under Bukwari. And it was that the Daura Secret Service working for Bukwari, they were looking, they declared Eme Fioli, the central bank governor, wanted. Same guy also working for Bukwari, both supposedly carrying out the orders of Bukwari, but they didn't get to arrest him. Bukwari had to provide another set of security for Eme Fioli, okay, until he became the sacrificial lamb of Bukwari's government, just like uh, Dasuki. Do you remember Sambo Dasuki? Of course you do. Now, the story of Eme Fioli is about to start looking so similar, if not same, as Dasuki. Dasuki was pop publicly, popularly, eh, uh, you know, declared as a rogue thief, national security advisor that sat on the resources that was meant to be used in combating Boko Haram. Nobody would hear that and would not want uh, the head of uh, Dasuki on the next uh, supper plate. They rode on this for so long. But when it was time for them to sue Dasuki, take him to court, they locked him up, kept him in communicado. Nobody saw him. And they kept him somewhere that it's called Daura Secret Service DSS detention. While the media in Nigeria, they were running on different, different bogus stories pushed by Bokwari's government. Remember those days now, Abi? <laughs> you were waiting for Dasuki to have his day in court so that they can probe him how he colluded with the Nigeria military and, they sw and then with uh, good luck, Jonathan, and they swallowed $2 billion. But because he didn't tell you the whole story, and it was actually at the time that Bokwari was coming to fight corruption. Here you get. So everyone that, uh, if you, if, I mean, when Bokwari wanted to go after anybody, all they had to say is that uh, the person was corrupt. So when it was time for them to bring Dasuki to court, guess what kind of charges they brought against Dasuki? National Security Advisor, a, gen a retired general in Nigerian Army. They charged him for illegal gun possession. Nothing to do with $2 billion he stole or he, may he shared to other people because the person that ordered his arrest, Bokwari, also collected nearly half a million uh, dollars cash with another over 600 million era worth of uh, SUV bulletproof cars they gave to him. So the media was talking about the corruption. But when it was time for them to sue Dasuki for all of this corruption, they sued him for illegal gun possession, that they found some gun in his custody. And these guns, he didn't have license for them. Okay, go ahead and prove the illegal gun possession. Dasuki never attended court twice until they finally said he should go. Because if they, if they actually wanted to probe the office of the National Security Advisor under Jonathan, the money expended, okay, and the results they got, eh, heads will roll. Of course, heads will roll, including those who helped APC, Egbekegbe, sabotage, Good luck, Egbere Jolantan. So what did they do? They just let you enjoy the media frenzy and everybody just moved on until Bokwari's Shege caught up with a lot of you and no strength to even, uh, to even shout or ask questions anymore. Why Dasuki was in jail? Dasuki who was blamed for thousands of people who died in the northern part of Nigeria in the hands of the Boko Haram terrorist. Dasuki was in jail his wife was giving birth to new kids. Anyway, that is uh, the story of Dasuki. Now, this second part time of uh, Bokwari, where Eme Fioli, 
who happen to be part of the same PDP government, good luck, Igbele Jolantan's government, the same central bank that supposedly released all of that cash, bullion vans, to the politicians on the order of uh, Dasuki, according to the media. When they were sacking and arresting, they kept him a few late. In fact, they renewed, I mean, they verified or confirmed him. He was part of that too. So keeping him a few late, eight years down the line, Nigeria entered the worst session of corruption. Okay? Nigeria experienced the worst, the worst, worst kind of economy. Okay? Recession was like normal thing to them. Job losses, stealing of money printing of money. They broke all rules. And it may feel like that broke all of these rules. It broke them on the order of Bokuari. So, they said, it may feel like, what it may feel like cost Nigeria in that infamous, unsuccessful recoloring of your Naira. The printing of money the forex kickback and money laundering and all of the things they told you in the media, they locked the Mefiole up for almost a month now. Yes, it's been locked up for almost a month. Until his own lawyers had to go to court to sue the DSS. That what are you doing with him? Take him to court or let him go. Now, the same Daura secret service that has now changed to Dokwemu stupid service under call the Escobat, eh? They gave them a week to sue and bring all of these charges against him. Sure you get. So that oh yeah, I may feel it. Like, come and start talking about all this money. Come and start talking about all of this uh, load of printed cash. Come and start talking about all these policies that you put in place for your friends, for your friends and families. Because if they are to, to actually charge a Mayfield, they will arrest Bokwari before Ishai tonight. What time is it? Oh, it's already past Ishai. They will arrest Bokwari. They would have arrested Bokwari by now. If they should charge a Mayfield for all of his crimes, they, it's like charging a Mayfield for Bokwari's crime. They would have to arrest the entire Bokwari's family. I'm not joking, no. All Bokwari's children, okay? Their husbands, their wives, Bokwari's wife. They would arrest the entire family. They would then go ahead and start arresting Bokwari's in-laws. These are families of his wives, okay? Family of, uh, you know what I mean, in-laws, after that, eh, they will come back, they will start, they will then go straight into Bokwari's immediate no, nuclear family, cousins, oh, nephew, oh, and the rest of them, including those who are dead, they will arrest all their children. It was a bazaar. Central Bank of Nigeria became the piggy bank of uh, these criminals led by Bokwari. It was like entire bleeding. So the media said they found 100 kinico billion, seven kinico billion, 100 and kinico kinico trillion that a mayfield is stole. The same way they told you about Dasuki and the rest of them at the time. But the intention is not to prosecute a mayfield at all. In fact, if uh, they had that intention, eh? Bokwari and Tifnumu will not meet in London. They won't. It would have been so straightforward. You see, if they should charge a Mayfield for all his crime against Nigeria, the crimes he committed, they will be the crimes of Bokwari because he committed all these crimes straight with the order of Bokwari. So there's no way you're going to pick him. There is no way they will prosecute Dasuki for his crimes that they will not arrest good luck. Jonathan, his wife, his family, and even this Eme Fioli, and so many other people from that same central bank. So if they should prosecute Eme Fioli for his crime, they will begin to arrest all your state governors, a lot of them, past governors, present governor, former senator, present senator, former uh, minister. Eme Fioli turned the central bank of Nigeria 
to his usual, like, uh, you know, his uh, biblical role, I mean, not role, biblical name, printing money. You, want, you know what is called fiscal irresponsibility? Fiscal rascality. It's like you could do whatever you want, no consequences when businesses were dying. People were losing their savings, their investment, their jobs. People were actually losing everything. This was like a crime again. But if they need to do that normally, Bokwari will not sleep in Daura tonight. So what did they come up with? Doc Bemu stupid service, DSS. In order to beat the deadline given by the court for them to either sue Emefiuli or just let him go, they decided to sue him. Guess what they are suing him for? They said they checked his house and they found 300,000 naira cash that he couldn't account for. Then they found a gun. I'll put it on the screen. Let's take a look at it so I can read it out for you. Okay? Country of 200 million people that these clowns, these jokers, Actually, believe that. Uh, sorry, uh, our people in uh, Somalia, if you are watching me, eh? this country of uh, supposed sophisticated uh, 200 million people, where jokers, clowns like this, are playing a script. They are actually uh, things that actually have to do with lives of people. And as I said, right, this is the charges. They say count one, the first count against a Mefioli. That you, God do name, Efioli, of number eight, Colorado Street, Maitama Abuja, on or blah, 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 at number three, Iruklo Zikoyi, Etiosa, local government, Lagos State, within the jurisdiction of this court, honorable court, add in your possession one single barrel shotgun, Joseph Magnum 8371, without license. You, hear, you thereby committed an offense. Contrary to section blah, 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 of firearms. Count two, that you, God, do the may feel the male of this blah, 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 Ikoyi, Etiosa, eh? that you, in this honorable court, right, jurisdiction of this honorable court, in your possession, 123 rounds of live ammunition, cartridges, without license. You hereby committed an offense. Contrary to section eight, blah, 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 firearms nonsense, and all that. Are they being serious? Eh? These are the two count charges brought against the Mayfioli. And they are asking the court to, uh, to give them the, the power to keep him in their detention because they are still doing their investigation. Is this not embarrassing? Is this not even like a shame? Eh? This guy, eh, on the order of uh, Bokuari, destroyed the Nigeria economy, destroyed Nigerian jobs, destroyed Nigeria businesses, left Nigeria in this generational indebtedness. Okay? And here you are. You are charging him for having a gun and then some cartridges without license. So what they are saying right now is that uh, Eme Fioli is going to be charged as an unknown gunman. That's it. Are you listening? Yeah. Emil Fioli will now be charged for, will be charged as unknown gunman. And all the story that is sponsoring terrorism, funding terrorism, okay, is uh, doing money laundering. Is, uh, uh, you know, when he was printing money for Bokwari, he was taking some for himself, okay? When he was, uh, you know, giving out uh, this no collateral loan. To some of the businesses associated with Bokwari's uh, friends and families. Eh? So, in all of these, they are just ESAs, according to these guys. So, Eme Fioli is now being charged as an unknown gunman. Is that not a joke? Eh? After all of this. Now, when they dropped that at their own court, the court said if they don't release him and they don't charge him, Okay. I mean, sorry, if they are not charging him, then they have, if they don't charge him in, today, in one week, they should let him go. 
Yeah, I think his lawyer even said that. Where is that again? Hang on. Peace and detained on the 10th of June by operatives of the DSS. While the DSS argued that a detention order was obtained from an Abuja magistrate, a MFLA's lawyer countered that his arrest and detention without formal charge is a contravention of the law. Both parties argued on the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the matter, ruling on the application of enforcement of fundamental right. Justice Hamza Muazu held that Section 46, Subsection 1 of the Constitution empowered the FCT court to adjudicate on the matter. The judge held that it is unlawful for the DSS to continue to detain the suspended CBN governor while shopping for evidence, directing it to charge the applicant to release him on administrative bail. We expect him to be released on administrative bail today as we speak. We expect him to be released today in obedience of court order. I do not think that the president, who is a newly minted president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will like to start his administration with his organizations under him disobeying court orders. Though the respondents were not at hand to react to the ruling, counsel for MFLA Joseph Daudu S.A.N. appealed to the DSS to comply with the court order. The suspended CBN governor is being accused of Together, he's been accused of a uh, gun running. And they want to go and shop for evidence. You found gun in his house. You found the cartridges. In your investigation, they came up as that uh, he had no license for them. So he's committed a crime for owning gun without license. Abi, is that a billable offense? Is somebody in the Emefiolis uh, caliber uh, in today's Nigeria? Uh, who commit a crime of, uh, I mean, in what has happened or in, in all the crimes he's committed that we believe he has committed or been part of, that the list of them is that he holds a gun eh, without license. How does that solve or resolve the monumental destruction they brought upon Nigeria? Eh? And what evidence are they looking for again? You have the gun, you have the cartridges, your investigation said they are not licensed, so he's committed a crime. So what evidence again are you looking for? What happened to all the trillions of Naira and billions of dollars? I mean, this is a guy. Let me give you one example of this economic saboteur, right? I mean, economic sabotage that this saboteur was, I mean, is, or was, or still is anyway, because it's not punished. Dangote, Nigeria, eh? Under this guy, under Bokuari, through the central bank that this guy controls, right? They released over eleven billion dollars. Are you so about me? Eleven billion dollars, more than nine trillion naira, for refurbishment of refineries in Nigeria. Okay, um, you know now where are the refineries? Eh, this may feel it. But you know, on that same note, this guy secretly, Nigeria didn't have a clue. They made an arrangement with Dangote to use Nigeria as a collateral to get money for Dangote to build the refinery. Refinery that is not completed. It's not even up to 50%. See, I said this before. A lot of you, eh, hey, they have got shot the commission. Eh? Would you mean that? I know be the uh, what they call I know be I know be see be what they call them or prophet or anything. Oh. Dangote refinery. It's not even up to 50% completed. Kerosene could refine. You do hear me? Kerosene, it cannot refine. But anyway, this guy cooked up behind Nigerians when Nigeria was facing serious economic uh, doom. They made arrangements with Dangote to use Nigeria. They used the entire Nigeria to borrow money. Eh? And we didn't know. They said... Dangote, from uh, about 10 or so billion naira, I mean billion dollars, that this central bank under this Emefiole stood as guarantor for. Dangote never produced one pure water from that refinery. Sure you get, eh? This Emefiole came out and said, Dangote has paid back 70% of the loan. Yeah? How? He never even started the business. Whenever, uh, 
this this unboot slaves everywhere. They said Dangote had or has other businesses that could have used that money, profit from those businesses to pay back. Because you know, petrol business, eh? Dangote refinery will make so much money. That Dangote is rich. That's why he paid back over seven billion dollars. We didn't know when they borrowed him the money. On that same note, they are telling people, they say, even in that same Dangote refinery in call Nigeria, on behalf of Nigeria, eh, they have borrowed money, over $3 billion. They have used that to invest in Dangote refinery on behalf of Nigeria. Am I boss scam you? This is a Now, they did all those shady deals. Nobody knew about it. Until when Bokwari, they needed something to make Bokwari look good. They started uh, paving the way, where painting some places, making everywhere look like uh, somewhere they have put some installation, make them look like, eh, this place looks like refinery. Ah, oh my, this place, last song, eh? People are buying shares. Nobody knows who is buying the shares, okay? But the bottom line is this. The deal was more or less like, you see the way you go to a bank, eh, uh, GT Banky. I bet you go to, what's the name of it? Fidelity Bank, all those banks in Nigeria, eh? And you go there and open personal business accounts or, I mean, sorry, personal accounts or business accounts. Abi, Dangote, under this Solori Brukuso that plunged you into this everlasting poverty, oh, Dangote opened his own personal account with the Central Bank of Nigeria. And as a banker there, eh, it was more or less like he has the spear key to the vault of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Pretty cool. Be Dangote, Whenever Eme Fioli want to write all of his, all of his uh, John Dice economic policies, eh, that uh, Bokwari will stamp, they will have to sit, you know, they will have to sit Dangote down and Dangote's representatives to review the policy. Which of them is going to affect him? Oh, yeah, remove that one, replace it with this one. Oh, yeah, remove that one, replace it with this. So for eight years, ladies and gentlemen, eh, they use Nigeria to borrow money. Gave it to Dangote to build refinery that is not completed though. Before the, I mean, uh, what do you got? 50% completed or less than 50%. Oh. But before any production, the refinery don't pay 70%. What happened to the remaining money? Uh, the remaining money is an investment. Who is the person? Who is, who is the investor? Nigerians, on behalf of Nigerians. How much? So they shall package all the lies. Eh? Today, before they left, they decided to give the same Dangote refinery the single license to import fuel into Nigeria. NNPC, in charge of Nigeria crude oil under these criminals, NNPC that failed to remit shishi. There was a time that uh, more than nine months, NNPC in Nigeria remitted zero, zero dollars from the country that was producing over 1 uh, to $1.3 million, I mean, sorry, million barrels of crude oil every day under this Mephioli. So when they finally finished the old thing, they sold an NPC. Who are the owners of an NPC today? They say, no, an NPC is no longer an NPC. It has now become an NPLC. Who are the owners? The owners of an NPLC, they have invested over $3 billion in a Dangote refinery. Shetiri scam. Can you see the scam now? You can you explain the point. You can you explain. Dangote private businessman in one build refinery you know get money nigeria a country that was supposed to be a free market and all that eh the central bank of that nigeria decided to stand as surety for dangote to go and borrow all god knows how much over over 11 billion dollars now this money dangote didn't have for central bank of nigeria is too shorty for him nigeria didn't know that that deal happened. The person that made the process is that they are between Dangote, NNPC, Central Bank of Nigeria, and Buhari, and their family members who are privy to the deal. True life story, real story, sure you get. Now, when uh, Dangote couldn't deliver a refinery to help them break the fuel price in Nigeria, okay, what did they do? They announced that Dangote that they gave, I mean, they stood shorty for over $10 billion loan. Eh? He has paid back 
70% of the money, even before the completion of the refinery. Show and follow. Eh? Now, not just that, oh, you see the NNPC that represented Nigeria eh, in that deal as the oil field. So that same NNPC now turn the remaining money, they call it investing in Dangote refinery. And that investment is on behalf of all of you, Nigerians. So that when Dangote refinery start working, you will know that as Nigerians, eh, on your behalf, Nigeria is making money from Dangote refinery. That's what they sold you. Six months eh, before the end, the end of their government, they said, no, we are selling off some of government properties, gov government organizations that are not making profit. So they sold NMPC, the national uh, oil carrier of Nigeria, that invested the money in NMP, the one they used their name for the loaned money as an investment, that turned loan to an investment. Now, suddenly that NMPC no longer exists anymore. There's no long, there's no more NMPC. What you have now is NNPLC. They have sold NMPC. You see the confusion. Now, those who bought NNPC, we I mean PNNPC, we don't know them. But the owners who bought NNPC, they have uh, over three billion dollars. Okay, investment in Dangote. The money that was supposed to be the investment of Nigerians in Dangote. That was it, right? It's no longer for Nigerians. It is now those who are the owners of NNPSC that will begin to take those profits according to that arrangement. All right? And when you begin to look at them, you begin to see all the names of the criminals. You see, a Fioli, right? Now, today, eh, they did the deal so much that what Nigeria couldn't do, they gave it to Dan Gote. Economic saboteur. Now, Nigeria is in total debt of over $120 billion. And guess what? You will think, that's not a big money, by the way. The money they have stolen from Nigeria in that same period that the debt uh, of Nigeria skyrocketed, eh? It's more than, let me say, it's like times five of that. I'm saying over 600 billion, uh, billion US dollars worth of uh, resources have been stolen from Nigeria in the last eight years, especially under these criminals. I'll give you instances too. Nigeria is in debt of 120 billion. Nigeria can pay that debt in months. Like, no joke. If Nigeria is not being ruled by criminals, I'm, I'm serious, right? Everywhere you go now, Nigeria is like a dump site, like a dump site where people just scavenge. Those who are scavenging are not scavenging for debt or any, any waste or anything. They are scavenging for mineral resources. The Nigerian authority, eh, those who are in charge, are more interested in taking bribes than protecting those for the sake of their people. No. So in eight years, they plunged Nigeria. You see, for seven years on record, the oil thieves in Nigeria under this Eme Fioli and the uh, Bokwari and his gang, eh, they were stealing over 700,000 barrels of crude oil every day for seven years. On record, though, one of the vessels stealing that, they, are, they came out and said, they said, one of the vessels that has been doing this has been doing it for 12 years and he had the capacity of 800,000 barrels. Now, Bokwari that supervised all of that, they say he's strolling in Daura, he's resting, he's this and that. Eme Fioli, eh, that also kind of kept some few things for himself when he was allowing all of them to pilfer and do all of what they have, what they have done. So he's going to be the sacrificial lamb, but his own sacrificial lamb is also going to have some little protection, right? Like, you know, when you join gang, okay? And in that gang, one of you committed murder, you know, to sort of commit murder. And they look at one of you and say, you know, you, you have never had any criminal record. So what we'll do is that uh, you have to go to jail. You will say you are the one who do it, who did it. So you go to jail and spend like 20 years we we'll take care of your family. We we'll do all of that and this and that. But you, we just have to sacrifice yourself. That's exactly what I think uh, the deal was with uh, a Mayfioli, right? And the smoke screen, just to make you think, Kalu was actually like, is it even is that even possible? Tifnumbu fighting corruption is that even possible? Like, would you even believe that in your in your widest dream? Eh? Tifnumbu came in. The first thing they did was to remove the EFCC chairman. That one, that boy there, right? They removed him. That one was a thief too, a 
Ogologoju Ligidi, Corrective Gidi. The guy, they said the guy spent over 300 US, I mean, 300,000 US dollars just to show that he's, uh, you know, is the most successful Fulani boy in his entire lineage. He picked everybody from his family, his father, his uh, father's uh, wives, his own mom, his uh, own wives, the children, his own cousins, stepbrothers and sisters, nephew, everybody. I'm on this guy, pack everybody. Put them inside one uh, massive uh, private jet. And he took all of them to Mecca. That all of you, my family, you will go to Hajj this year and you become Alaji Alaja. He did it. EFCC chairman. One of the compromise they have on him, right? But removing him is not because they wanted to. No, 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 no. Ah, call. Eh? They removed him. Okay? And they started clearing the house. Everything that is inside the ICPC. Everything inside their code of conduct. Everything inside the EFCC. They are removing everything that has to do with Tifnumbu or anything that is associated with Tifnumbu. They deny it though. I don't believe them. I don't. I don't know if you do. But look at this guy reacting to this Emefiolis uh, detention. He's a lawyer. Kind of crackling as well, right? Be not as it may, DSS, upon searching, upon searching Emefiolis' house, found only 300,000 naira in his house. Does it mean that Emefiolis, from his legitimate and tied to uh, earnings, cannot have 300,000 naira in his house? And um, a license for pump action, a license for pump action. That is the only thing they found in his house. Every any other thing they come up tomorrow that they found in Emma Phillips' house is pure falsehood. The only two things they found in Emma Phillips' house is 300,000 naira cash and a license for a pump action gun. And it took them almost more than one month and until the court intervened yesterday for them to go and file a charge, which confirmed the entire story, the entire saga, and as pronounced by Honorable Justice M.A. Hassan, whatever they, file, they purport to file are trumped up terrorism allegation. They are falsehood ab initio and they will remain so. These people should come out and help me. This police just <laughs> straight bullets. That part of our story tonight, okay. <laughs> but like I said, it's a joke, isn't it? More or less like a joke. Unfortunately, the people they are playing the script and are acting the script for. Eh, I don't know how many people actually believe them in a way, okay, but that's my part. I told you the written address, Tifnumbu's uh, written address in kind of a closing his defense against Peter Obi's petition, okay, is out. I'm not gonna be reading through everything, but there are some key things they said that I actually wanna let you see, like in part, eh? for the next uh, 15 minutes. Then we're gonna take it on uh, from, uh, from there. Now, if you take a look at your screen, okay, uh, let's use my own uh, kind of illustration, all right? Um, this is the copy of Tifnumbu's closing uh, written address, okay? And it contains response closures, citations and a few things that makes it look like these guys don't actually believe that the court is going to do the right thing maybe i should put it that way like they there is no show they they, they you know, the document actually shows that they are believing that they prove that the election was rigged is not on them to prove or not it is on Peter Obi and his people. Okay? Now, don't let me waste your time. Let's, let's use style to pick them, few from the, you know what I mean? So these are the people, Wali Ola you know, the lawyers, Olu Jimi, Akin Olu Jimi, Yusu Vali, Emmanuel Lukala, and the rest of them, yeah? So this is the written address that they are going to read to the court, possibly on Monday. 
when the tribunal they convene. Peter Obi and his own people are also going to write their own too. Okay. But written address is going to be everything that happened during the trial, what the witnesses said, evidence presented, okay, arguments, and a few other things, right? But let me read the preparatory notes, all right, uh, for, for us. Uh, sorry if uh, this is going to probably sound kind of, you know, somehow to some of you. I want to implore you to uh, read with me, okay? I can try and share the link for everyone there, right? So you can see that in this uh, petition, uh, Mr. Peter Obi is the first uh, petitioner. Labor Party is, uh, is the second petitioner. That's how they will address them. Where INEC is first respondent, I think. Uh, Bola Tinumbu, second respondent. Shetima, third respondent. Uh, APC, fourth respondent in that order. All right. So according to this, uh, which was submitted to the courts of appeal, the tribunal, the presidential petition election tribunal uh, yesterday. OK, here says Tinumbu, I mean, sorry, uh, Peter B, you know, and preparatory notes. Uh, they say or introduction. Let me go and read the introduction because some of them are filled with. OK, preparatory. Let's read that. Uh, the petition is in issue in this address is very novel in the sense that it is not a petition stricto senso. Familiar to our electoral jurisprudence, as the petitioners are not, this time around, complaining about election rigging, ballot box snatching, ballot box stuffing, violence, thuggery, vote buying, voters intimidation, disenfranchisement, interference by the military or the police, and such other electoral vices. The crux of their grouse this time around is that while the presidential election was peacefully conducted all over the country, as corroborated by their primary witness, and also I need to remind you, there are some of uh, what is written here eh, are pure sort of uh, conjectures by this Olani Kwekun. Some are open lies. Sure, you get there are some are open deniers, and even in their own statement, they say they say things like, Oh, uh, Labour Party and OB and is their witnesses, they relied on ESAs, one sockway, one sockway, kind of right. So they don't have any evidence that anything was wrong with the election. So this is them grandstanding, like everything you have seen, they didn't happen. That all of those things you have heard or seen during the trial, the evidence and all of them, they didn't happen. They are just waste of time. So don't, I, I need to warn you of that, okay? So that you don't begin to feel like, ah, why is he saying that? Because this is what they are presenting to court. This is what they are going to read on Monday when the courts convene as written address against Peter Obi's petition, okay? Sorry, let me continue. So this is them, they said preparatory, okay? Uh, the cross of their, according to they said, the crux of their grouse this time around is that while the presidential election was peacefully conducted, okay, all over the country, um, and the results accurately recorded in the various form EC8As, some unidentified results were not uploaded electronically to the INEC uh, election results uh, viewing, which is IREV portal. The other remote contention of these petitioners is that the second respondent did not score 25% or one quarter of the votes recorded in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. While the petitioners have also alluded to the respondent's non-qualification without any facts known to law. Do you see that? Did you read that, right? They said OB and his team didn't prove anything. But uh, you know what I mean? There has to do there any facts concerning the qualification of Tifnumbu. So introduction. So the second and the third respondent, which is Tinumbu and Shetima, present this written address in their defense to the petition against their emergence as president and vice president, respectively, at the presidential election conducted on the 25th, February 2023. So here is what they call the brief statement of facts. The respondent, which is Tifnumbu, so Tinumbu, who are, Tifnumbu and Shetima. I'll be using Tifnumbu and Shetima for respondents for easy communication, okay? 
So, brief statement of fact, according to Olani Pekun, said, Tifnumbu and Shetima, who are members of the APC, participated in the presidential election conducted by INEC into office of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the 25th of February, 2023. At the end of a freely contested elections, they were declared winners and respect, I mean, respectively returned as president and vice president, respectively, having polled a total vote of 8.7 million to the next PDP, we polled 6.9 million to the third responder, I mean, to the petitioner, Peter Obi, who scored 6.1 million. So they said the second respondent, which is Tinumbu, polled more than 25% of the total vote cast in 29 states of the Federation and the FCT. Do you see how they snuck that in there? Eh? Ola Nikpekun's written address is telling the court that Tifnumbu scored 25% in 29 states and FCT Abuja. While the petitioners, Peter Obi, only secured 25% in 16 states. I mean, the FCT inclusive. Right? So, ironically, Peter Obi, who came a distant thought in the election, is praying this honorable court to declare him as the winner. Peter Obi, main grouse with the election was that the results were not electronically uploaded to the IRF. And according to them, the election should be voided on the claim that same was not conducted in compliance with the provision of the Electoral Act 2022. Further, the petitioners or Peter Obi and Labour Party queried the candidature of uh, Shetima, I mean of uh, Tinumbu, on the ground, according to them, like they didn't present evidence. He said, according to them, that the third responder, which is Shetima, who was the associate of uh, Tinumbu at the election, was not properly nominated. As according to them, he was at the point of his nomination a senatorial candidate of the INEC for Borono, I mean, of APC, for Borono Central Senatorial District. Further, Peter Obi and Labour Party purported to challenge the qualification of Tinumbu to contest the elections. Embarking, as it were, I'm going to, on some fishing expedition, according to Olani Kweko in this written address, Peter Obi and Labour Party, they are embarking on uh, a fishing expedition. Give me a sec. <clears throat> so, uh, one sec. So, he said, on some fishing expeditions, relating to some purported forfeiture proceedings in the I mean, forfeiture proceedings in the United States of America at the build up of the elections Tinumbu I'm mean, sorry the second petition at Labour Party had instituted an action at the Federal High Court uh, Abuja against uh, INEC so I'm going to jump this part Let's go to, because they are beginning to go into, you know, all this. They said, they said, exhibited this, exhibited this and that. Let me go to another part. So, they said issue, or issues for determination. Shown of all irrelevancies. Eh? Give me a circle. I'll make a boat so that I can see well, well. Right? One moment. <laughs> Sorry. Good. So according to this part, eh, they say issues for determination shown of all irrelevancies in the, in the opinion of the respondent, which is Tifnumbu, the issues that arise for determination in this petition at the end of trial are as follows. Having regard to relevant provision of the Constitution of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, salient this, this, and that is where they're going to be talking about, uh, what do you call it? This one versus that one. Yara do a versus this. Eh? Upon combined reading, blah, 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 blah. You know, argument of issues. I'm going to have to share the link with you. I don't want to bore you with all these uh, legal jargons and all of that, okay? But I'm going to take you to the part, other part again, where they are like having their close, closing, uh, written, whatever, at the bottom of it. Give me a sec. 
Meanwhile, if you are still here with me, remember, you can uh, still share this broadcast, okay? Please, you know, if you haven't already, uh, you can. So this is where they talk about their evidence, uh, you know, uh, the witnesses and all of that, you know, going on. And the argument is that uh, Peter B is only talking about, uh, what do you call it? He's only talking about uh, the uh, INEC. They said every day the election was fine, but INEC did not upload results. These are not what Peter B and his team actually asked for, okay? They were not only challenging where they got rigged. They were even challenging where they even got declared winners. All right. So sorry, they even took it to, to like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to read all of this. It's like it's gonna be so boring. I, I mean, I, I can give you the uh, wrap up, but I see part I actually want to sort of uh, quote verbatim, you know, like word for word uh in this. It is so watery. That's the point. It is so watery, ladies and gentlemen. And you'll be like, no, these guys are not waiting. They are not, they are, it's, I, I don't think they have anything per se that they believe is going to save Tifnumbu. They are more, more interested in how the court is going to discover technicalities in this petition. Because you see in this uh, written address, there's a part where they quoted, uh, they quoted the Supreme Court, one of the Supreme Court uh, justices, where in one of their judgments, Okay, where they were like, uh, that quote, I'm going to get there. When I get there, I'll show you. It's kind of down, 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 down. It's 42 pages, so uh, 42 page uh, uh, written address. So they were quoting this Supreme Court judge or justice. Now, what the Supreme Court justice uh, said, I'm going to read down for you, right? At this bottom, it said, okay, in fact, I don't have to because it's like a long uh, bad dash as well. But what, what he's saying, as you can see it on your screen, is that the Supreme Court was like, we cannot help you find evidence to win your case. It's like Peter B, according to this, what they have written, oh, and all of these uh, court cases and all of them, I mean, so all these uh, tribunal evidence and all that. Oh. So they said they only call just one witness because they don't want to waste the court's time. That the court should just throw the oath in out. Okay? That Peter B and neighbor party, they came to court and they were asking the court to tell the INEC to give them evidence so that they can prove their case, that if they read uh, the judgment, if they read the judgment of the Supreme Court, blah, 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 so, 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 so time, I could even quote them, they say, if you read the court in Elias versus Omar Barry, eh, they say just, uh, justice, eh, they say justice, Udo Uduma, opined, does, in quotes, if there was ever any case completely starved of evidence, this is, they put it in their written address so for the tribunal people to read. Oh. I mean, they will read it to them in the tribunal and say, remember this in 1982, my lord. Eh? The Supreme Court Justice Udo Uduma, in the case, in the case of uh, Elias v. That is, uh, in the case of Elias uh, v. Uh, versus Omar Bari. I think they used the legal term of uh, Elias v. Omar Bari. So he now already said, if there was ever any case completely starved of evidence, this is certainly one. This case clearly cries to I Evans in vain to be fed with relevant and admissible evidence. The appellant woefully failed to realize that judges do not act like the oracles of Ife, which is often engaged in crystal gazing and thereafter would proclaim a new oba in succession to the to a deceased oba judges cannot perform miracles in the handling of civil claims and at least of all manufactured evidence for the purpose of assisting a plaintiff to win his case so of course so what they are saying is that peter b and labor party they did not present any evidence so and they they, they shouldn't expect the the judges to go and start looking for evidence for Peter Obi and Labour Party. So, my lord, there is no evidence. Okay, they just they are looking for evidence to prove that I neck rigged or this is the winner. This whole thing is waste of time, my lord. Let us dismiss the case. I rest my case. That is what uh, Tiff Numbu's lawyer, Tiff Numbu Shetima lawyer. That's what they are going to read. I don't know what I neck lawyer will read though. 
You know, say I need a lawyer. I've also called one one witness. Abi, Tiffany Bu called one witness. APC called one witness. She, excuse me, she Tima called one witness. And here is the irony. I mean, here is the funny part because it's funny. The witness for Tifnumbu, for APC, and for Shitima, now one person who claimed to be a lawyer, Okwaya Miba Midili. When Okwaya Miba Midili was giving his own uh, evidence as in when he were interrogating him, Okwaya Miba Midili that was that actually indicted Tifnumbu. So they are putting it in that document, that written document that even that one that they said Tifnumbu got convicted or forfeited money in America. My Lord, <laughs> it's all, you know, matter, my Lord. That was years ago. Nigeria law says after 10 years, even if you keep a sin, once you don't serve your time, you can become president. They put it in that uh, petition. Now go see that part. I'll show you. You know, so what they practically was saying is that, uh, where is it? Right. Practically, what they're saying is that, uh, all this evidence, they don't really matter, my lord. Okay? Because the bottom line is that, my lord, they need to show the evidence. And I don't think they have. We don't see anything. In fact, this whole thing is, you know, just throw it out. I'm going to show you. Get one part. They were referring to that. Too. See? Uh, I think uh, it's the conclusion. They said, based on the argument and submission contained in this address, Empty nonsense, they wrote here, all right? We urge this honorable court to dismiss this petition as totally lacking in merit, substance, and bona fide. It has been glaringly shown and demonstrated by the presentation of the petition itself and the evidence, I mean, and the evidence presented by the petitioners, including the evidence of uh, Petitioners a witness, 12, that the petition itself is not only frivolous, but almost amount to a crass abuse of the process of court. In conclusion, this address may, sorry, the, in conclusion, uh, I'm sorry, in concluding this address, rather, may we draw your lordship attention to the memorable pronouncement of the Supreme Court in Elias v. Omar Barry, which I told you earlier. So it's like, there is no evidence of anything, my Lord. It's just hearsay, no exhibit, no nothing. Okay? And this has made so many obedient, so like they are so raging. Do you want me to explain that? Eh? A lot of them can sit through the ridiculousness, the joke, and they are boiling. Here you get. They are seeing the you know, the sort of uh, the mockery of this 